Hello viewers, you're welcome to another exciting lesson in IDC Learning Center YouTube channel I'm with Mr. Marco Kafo. For today's video, we'll be looking at National Examinations Council, that's 2024 Basic Education Certificate Examination, Mathematics Essay. This is the essay questions and part three of the Mathematics Question Paper. You can look up my channel, I've done um, part one, which is 60 questions. I solve all the 60 questions. I broke them into three parts, and this is the essay part. And then I'm still going to solve all the questions in paper two. And then, of course, we'll be answering all the questions in English and other questions you've written. So all you need to do is to get your questions, your question paper, and follow through to see how well you fare during the exam. Without wasting time, let's um, take a look at... Um, the questions. Now, for the questions, we have two questions here, and this question carries 20 marks. Yeah, paper three carries 20 marks. You are asked to answer all the questions. So, question number one E, let's start with that. So, <clears throat> this question says find the values of x, y, and z in the figure below. Okay. I'm going to solve in the question paper. Now let's start from this straight line, from this point down to this point. This forms angle on a straight line. In mathematics, angle on a straight line must be equal to 180. So to get y, I can just bring out that straight line angle. So it looks something like this. If I bring it out, this side is 64 degrees. This side is um, 30 degrees. And then this is the y, is 64 degrees. So the sum of 30 degrees plus y plus 64 degrees. Okay, let me shift it back a bit. So 30 degrees plus 64 degrees plus y must give me 180 degrees. Because I said the sum of a straight line must be equal to 180. 30 plus 64 will give me 104 degrees plus y equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so now collect like times y will be at the left hand side. You have 180 at the right hand side. Move 104 to the right hand side. So 104 is a positive number. As it crosses the equal to sign, it will change to negative 104. So, um, let me accommodate it in this space. So, it should give me negative 104. Yes. The value of y, therefore, will be 180 minus 104. Borrow 1 from 8. 8 reduces to 7. Put the 1 ten, here, 10. Minus 4, 6. Bring down 7. That's 76 degrees. I have the value of y. All right, that is for um, y. Um, next, we need to solve for x, which is this angle. Again, angle on a straight line is 180. So this is a straight line. It simply means that um, for x, x, that's angle x, x degree, Plus 135 will form angle on a straight line. So both of them must be equal to what? 180 degree. To get the value of x, you collect like terms. 180 is at the right hand side. You move plus 135 degrees to the right hand side to meet 180. So that will give you minus 135 degrees. So the value of x will be um, 180 minus 135. Probably give you that's 45 degrees. Okay, we can see solve this together 180 minus 135. Put one from 8, 8 reduces to 7. Put the one here 10 minus 5, 5, 7 minus 3, 4. That's 45 degrees. Now I have x and y. Next is to find the value of the last angle here, which is z. Now, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. So, this angle X plus angle Z plus angle Y must give you 180. You become again 
we know the I said x plus y plus z must give you 108 degrees. We know that x is 45 degrees and um, y we solved and got 76 degrees. Now we don't know the value of 7 so let this be equal to 180 degrees. Now the next thing we need to sum up 45 and 76. 5 plus 6 is 11, 1, 7 plus 4, 11 plus 1. That's 121 degrees plus 7 degrees. That's angle Z, sorry, plus Z, equal to 180 degrees. To get Z, collect um, like times Z is equal to 180 minus 121, which move from the left to the right hand side. Borrow 1 from 8, 8 reduces to 7. Put the 1 here, this is 10 minus 1, 9, 7 minus 2, 5. Z is 59 degrees. So for question A, for question 1A, X is 45 degrees, Y is what? 76 degrees, and Z is 59 degrees. Here you have your answer, so you can gently copy this into your note or somewhere for reference sake. Now we are done with this, we need to go to question 1B. So question 1B says, calculate, calculate the mean of the data below, correct to one decimal place. Now we have this call 9. How many times did 9 appear? The frequency is 3. That's um, 9, 9, 9, 9 appeared 3 times. The sum of 9 is 9 times 3, 27. 27 plus they go to 10 10 appeared 5 times 10 10 in 5 places 10 times 5 the sum of 10 is 50 then you go to 12 12 appeared tw twice 12 plus 12 24 you go to 13 13 appeared um, twice 13 times 2 26 you go to 15 15 appeared three times 15 times three that's 45 how do you find mean mean is simply the sum total okay divided by number of items all right so the sum total we have to sum them up um, will be 27 plus 50 plus 24 plus 26 plus 45. This will give me the sum total. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 7, 17 plus 5, 22. Put 2, move 2 here. 2 plus 2, 4. Plus 5, 9. Plus 2, 11. Plus 2, 13. Plus 4. 17 the sum total is 172 number of items if you check it from here okay let me just explain it the way you understand this nine appeared three times ten appeared five times one two three four five twelve appeared twice thirteen appeared twice fifteen appeared three times 15 15 now check the number of items you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so we have 15 items here all right so if we divide 172 by 15 it will give us 11.4 6 6 6 6 you know there about but the question says your answer should be corrected to one decimal place from the decimal you move once you check the closest digit to what we have here which is 11.4 to one decimal is up to five if the closest digit is up to five you round it up to one and add it to your answer since we have six which is up to five we round it up to one 
add it to 4, final answer will be 11.5. But if the closest digit is less than 5, you leave your answer the way it was. So the final answer is 11.5. And now we are done with question 1A and question 1B. Can I um, copy this into your notes and um, get ready as we take question 2. Question 2 is um, a question in binary, is um, addition of binary numbers. Binary, I mean these two numbers. So for 2A, we have evaluator 11011 base 2 plus 1111 base 2. So let's sum this up 11011 1 plus 1111. So let's sum this both are in base 2. Now 1 plus 1 in base 2, 1 plus 1 is 10. Then 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. That's how to sum up base 2. One plus, take note of this. Let me write it here. 1 plus 1 is 10. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. So since this is base 2, 1 plus 1 is 10. You put 0, you move 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. You put 1, you bring 1 here. This 1 plus this 1 here, you give me 10. 0, you move 1 here. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. 1, you move 1 here. 1 plus 1 is 10. And this is your answer, base 2. Question 2 has three children. We have 2A, 2B, and 2C. Now we are done with 2A. Let's take um, 2B. Okay, 2B. Okay, question 2B says... Solve the equation 2x minus 1 over 3 minus 4x equal to 2 out of 5. For equation like this, the first thing you need to do is to cross multiply. So this time this, this time this. This denominator, 3 minus 4x times 2, we give you 2 bracket 3 minus 4x to show that 2 is multiplying everything equal to 5 times what you have there that's 5 brackets 2x minus 1 2 times 3 use 2 to multiply each of the term in the bracket to break the bracket 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2 times minus 4 uh, 2 times 4 is 8x that's 2 times 4x I've already brought out the minus sign equal to right hand side 5 times 2x is 10x minus 5 times 1 is 5 um sort this you know i can rearrange this as 10x minus 5 equal to 6 minus 8x i always want the variables or the bigger variable to be at the left hand side so that it will be easier to you know to just solve so 10x is the bigger variable meet move the smaller variable minus 8x to the left hand side so as minus 8x crosses the equal to sign it changes to plus 8x now equal to 6 as minus 5 crosses the equal to sign it changes to plus 5 then x plus 8x will give me 18x equal to 6 plus 5 11 divide both sides by 18 18 year 1 18 year 1 x is equal to 11 out of 18 all right, let's look at question C, which happens to be the last. Okay, let's wipe the board. So question 2C says, find the rate per annum. Now the formula for calculating rate is equal to simple interest times 100 divided by principal times time. So the rate in the question find the rate per annum if thirty six thousand is paid as simple interest. So the simple interest is thirty six thousand naira times hundred divided by the principal on one hundred and twenty thousand. So the principal is one hundred and twenty thousand times deposited in a bank for three years. The time is three years. 
So one, two, three, four cancels. One, two, three, four. So this 12 year one, 12 into 36 is three. Three year one, three year one. So the rate is simply 1% rate. Okay, so that is the answer for question 2C. Thank you very much for staying with me. I hope you enjoyed everything we've done. I'm here to help you excel in your academic. So feel free to share my content, subscribe if you've not done so, and keep encouraging what I do so I can keep bringing more content your way. For now, I'm going to say bye.